Welcome to Box Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the movie Space Sweepers, released in the year 2021. The movie begins in the year 2092, and we're shown a barren Earth, which has become inhabitable due to global warming. The human race is finding it extremely hard to survive, and it could easily go extinct very soon. In this situation, a company named UTS Corporation has built a space station to sustain some selected members of the human population. The space station is domed with a lot of greenery, as the station is made to have an ecosystem which replicates the ecosystem the Earth once had. Life seems to be thriving there. We then meet James Sullivan, who is the genius behind the space station, as well as the CEO of UTS. Another interesting thing about the man is that despite appearing to be middle-aged, he is 150 years old. Some reporters from Earth arrive to interview him about the colonization of Mars. Sullivan talks about how using new technology, they have made Mars a habitable green planet, and will soon be announcing this to the public. However, one of the reporters can't keep himself quiet, and confronts Sullivan about how his space station harbors only the rich and the elite, while 90% of the Earth's population is forced to continue living on the inhabitable planet and breathe in toxic air. But according to Sullivan, all is well, and the current state of the Earth is due to the negligence of humans. The next scene shows us how the Earth's orbit is full of debris, which is cleared by numerous non-citizens who work as space sweepers. They gather the space debris and deposit it at a place called the factory. Among these crews is one led by Captain Jang, which includes Tai Ho, Tiger Park, and Bubs, who is an android. Tai Ho requires a large sum of money for some personal reason, while Tiger, who is their mechanic, was a drug baron on Earth while Bubs, once a soldier, now helps repair the ship and cast the net for space junk while saving up to get a complete skin graft. The thing that drives them all and keeps them together is the need to earn money, but they are almost bankrupt now, and the bank will soon seize their ship, which is called Victory. One day, Tai Ho, Tiger, and Bubs are doing some routine repairs when they see some movement in the ship's container. Upon opening, they are greeted by a little girl hiding among the spheres. The girl introduces herself as Dorothy and is taken inside the ship. But to judge her on her cuteness could prove fatal, as it turns out that Dorothy is not a girl at all. The crew soon watches footage of an android blast which occurred in a city and killed at least a hundred people. The girl robot was sent by a terrorist organization known as Black Fox. The ship crew watch in horror as they realize that the kid they've taken in is nothing but a walking bomb. As they watch, Dorothy's eyes roll back and everyone dives to the floor, anticipating a blast. But Dorothy simply ends up sneezing and joins everyone on the floor, giggling. In his panic, Tiger calls the police, while Tai Ho looks through the robot's backpack and finds a phone, among other things. Upon checking the call log, Tai Ho finds several calls from someone called Kang Hyun Yu. Meanwhile, we see that Dorothy is more than just a robot weapon. When she sees a dead plant on the ship, she uses her powers to revive it. On the other hand, Tai Ho comes up with a plan. He proposes that they call Black Fox using the phone as they must be looking for their weapon and make a deal with them. This way they'll be able to make a lot of money in one swoop. So the group makes the call to Kang, who agrees to give them two million dollars if they return Dorothy to him. He tells them to bring the girl to a nightclub. The scene cuts to show us that the call is being intercepted by Sullivan. Before the crew can go to the club, a police officer arrives due to the call made by Tiger earlier. But the guy is not on duty and is just there to harass them. Jang steps up to deal with the guy and soon gets rid of him. The crew brings Dorothy to the club, where Sullivan's team, led by Camila, is waiting for them. They also have orders to kill Dorothy's kidnappers. Tai Ho and Tiger meet with Kang, who gives them the money. But due to their distraction with the deal, Dorothy sneaks out of the bag she's kept in and wanders off into the club. This does not go so well, as everyone recognizes the girl from the news, and they begin to back away from her. Tai Ho and Tiger find Dorothy just as Camila's team opens fire on them. Soldier One starts to shoot at them. Dorothy's eyes change color, and Tai Ho and Tiger are protected from the blast by a sort of force field around them. Jang, watching through a feed on the ship, notices the man who came to collect Dorothy, calling her Kot Nim. We then cut to UTS headquarters, where Sullivan is not happy with the proceedings in the nightclub. 
There is a meeting going on where we finally find out the technology which made it possible to turn an uninhabitable planet like Mars full of trees and greenery. The technology is known as nanobots, which enable plants to become super plants. This allows them to adapt to any environment, soil, and atmosphere and rapidly grow in just a few days without the need for sunlight and thus without needing oxygen. This is a great advancement in technology. In the middle of the meeting, we see Sullivan look at a pair of rune goggles and lose his cool. In his fury, dark veins pop against his skin, and he takes on a monstrous appearance. The trio makes it back to the ship, where Dorothy admits that Kotnim is her Korean name. Tai Ho ignores her, while Tiger becomes friendly with her and suggests keeping her. Tai Ho dismisses the idea and goes to set up another call with Kang Hyun Woo to rearrange the exchange. Jang finds papers in Dorothy's backpack and goes through them. Bubs puts makeup on Dorothy and tells her the story of Tai Ho. As a child soldier, he attacked and boarded a ship that carried several fleeing non-citizens, killing them all. He noticed a baby still alive in the arms of a dead woman and adopted the girl. He fed her, bathed her, and looked after her. But after some test results showed that due to the loud noise, the girl's ear canal had been damaged, Tai Ho realized this happened because of him. Tai Ho is overtaken by guilt and finds himself unable to hurt anyone else. And so, due to his inability to follow orders that cause harm, Tai Ho finds himself fired from UTS. He is made homeless and reduced to the miserable life of a non-citizen. After a year of homelessness, Tai Ho became desperate and gambled, neglecting Su Ni. One day, however, the worst happened. Debris from space collapsed where Su Ni had gone to find something to eat and had been blown into space from the resulting blast. Tai Ho had been devastated, but when he went to the space lost and found to recruit a recovery team to locate her tracker, he had been unable to pay the steep price. He has only three years to get enough money, otherwise Su Ni would not remain in Earth's orbit and be lost forever in space. Dorothy, or Kat Nim, also finds out that Bub is actually a female, but due to her voice, she's mistaken to be a male. Kang calls and the crew picks up. He asks them to meet in two hours, which is something Tiger is not happy with. He's grown attached to the little girl and is worried about what the black fox will do to her if they give her up. But Tai Ho does not care for a robot. For him, it's more important to acquire the money and find his lost daughter who only has a few years left before she'll exit the orbit. We then jump to Sullivan, who's talking to the reporter who confronted him earlier about using up Earth's resources to make the space station. He tells the guy that when he was six, his parents were killed by some terrorists, and since then he had vowed to make a better world. He did not care for Earth and its resources, or the people suffering. He then proceeds to kill the reporter. The next scene shows us Kat Nim going to the toilet where she's pursued by a man named Karam. He grabs her and makes a run for it, but her screams attract Tai Ho and Tiger, who come to her rescue. Once the fight ends, the crew comes face to face with Karam and his group. They drop the bomb on them that Kotnim is not a robot, but a human girl. She had been born with a congenital disease, which made her unable to speak or walk. As a last effort to save her life, her father, Dr. Kang, injected her with nanobots. This saved the girl and also healed most of her, along with a secret ability. Little Kotnim is able to communicate with other nanobots, which explains how she revived the tomato plant on Victory earlier on. However, when Sullivan found out about Kotnim and her abilities, he used her to make Mars inhabitable. Instead of improving Earth's atmosphere, he wanted to capitalize on this opportunity. Then comes the second plot twist. Black Fox is not a terrorist group but actually environmental activists who spoke up against Sullivan's actions. He labeled them as terrorists and tried to have them killed. The Black Fox members tell Captain Jang's group that Sullivan does not care for humanity, and after the successful launch of his Mars project, he plans on destroying Earth, along with Kat Nim. But the girl is protected by nanobots, which can only be destroyed at a temperature of 200 million degrees Celsius. This is why he has prepared a core in his factory, a gravity engine, where he will store a hydrogen bomb. He will then take Kotnim there and blow it all up, 
which will not only destroy the place, the girl and the nanobots, but the factory will crash into the earth and kill up to three million people. Just then, the place is attacked by Sullivan's space guards, who are after Kotnim and the Black Fox. Our crew runs to save themselves and manages to get away with the help of nanobots. They're then contacted by Kang, who asks them to meet up. The crew decides to unite Kotnim with her father and disable the bomb with the help of the Black Fox, who will locate and bring Dr. Kang to the meeting point. Soldiers attack them, but Tai Ho and Kotnim manage to flee on the victory. They enter a space debris field, where nanobots begin to consume their ship. Kotnim communicates with them, and the nanobots disperse. They enter the factory where the meetup is scheduled, and Kang has only just taken his daughter in his arms when Sullivan shows up. His robots kill everyone, the Black Fox members and Kang. He captures Captain Jang's crew as well and beats them up. But Jang had a microbomb embedded in her teeth, which she activates. But it turns out Sullivan knew about this and extracts the bomb. He deactivates the bomb, and we find out that Jang used to work for Sullivan. Jang was one of the child geniuses sponsored by UTS and created several high-tech inventions for the company but after discovering how the company works, became a pirate and tried to assassinate Sullivan. Her crew was killed while Sullivan survived, so she changed identities and had an eye transplant. Sullivan then turns to Tai Ho and offers him $2 million in exchange for abandoning Kot Nim. Tai Ho, who doesn't want to give up the innocent girl to this man, does so anyway because he has finally gotten what he wanted for the last three years, money so that he can find his daughter. Tai Ho gives up Kot Nim and takes the money, although the rest of the crew refuses to touch it, wanting to go after Kot Nim. Tai Ho goes to the Lost and Found, where he hands over the money. We then see him going through a box. There, he finds various things belonging to his daughter, including drawings, toys, and a small book. He opens it to read how Su Ni had wanted to become a good person like her father and breaks down crying, both in grief for having lost his daughter and also in guilt for having given up another girl who could have been saved to a psychopath. Tai Ho takes the money and returns to victory, where he apologizes to Jang and Tiger, and together they all prepare to rescue Kot Nim. On their way, they're attacked by some drones, but manage to deal with them and make it out in one piece. They arrive at the factory, where they meet Kot Nim, and Jang gets to work defusing the hydrogen bomb but she gives everyone the bad news that the bomb cannot be diffused, and if it blows up, the radius of its krypton waves will be around 5,000 kilometers, which will kill the nanobots inside Kotnim, and then she will return to her ill state and soon die. Along with that, Earth will also be affected. The crew sets off to fly 5,000 kilometers away, but is interrupted by Soldier 1. Tiger fights her and successfully ejects her from the factory, the team sends out a message to the rest of the space sweepers, who come to their aid, fighting the attacking troops. While the battle rages, the population of Earth and UTS colonies are shocked to learn of Sullivan's true goals when they hear a recording of him recounting his plan. The victory is intercepted by Sullivan himself, who tries to fight the crew to get back Kot Nim. When it seems they have lost the battle, Tiger and Tai Ho manage a final boost that puts the ship out of the blast range. The crew reveals that Kot Nim was left safely behind with other space sweepers. The victory had removed the bomb from the core and carried it away, ready to sacrifice their lives to save Earth and Kot Nim. The bomb explodes, but Kot Nim summons the nanobots to protect the victory, saving the lives of the crew. In the aftermath of the battle, with Sullivan dead, UTS publicly apologizes for the cover-up and promises to help make the Earth more habitable. Kot Nim is adopted by the crew, and using her powers, enables Tai Ho to say goodbye to Su Ni. Bubs gets her skin graft. Tiger and Tai Ho take Kot Nim down to Earth to help grow trees, and they all continue space sweeping. And this is where the movie ends. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.